Hey guys, Dean here. Dropshipping can be a very competitive space and because of this, it can be really challenging to get into. What I'm going to be talking about today are seven common mistakes which are lesser known, which you need to familiarize yourself with. You must avoid all seven of these big mistakes and capitalize on not making them if you want to improve your chances of success. Now, the first one is not actually testing a product before you sell it. Now, this is a very important one, okay? And I've been very guilty of doing this myself. This is actually a critical mistake, especially with certain products. Now, let me expand on that. It will cost you a lot of money in the long run. You need to make sure that you actually test a product yourself to actually consider its viability and also its quality specifically before you actually decide to sell it. If you don't, the chances are that you'll get returns is going to be pretty high, right? For an example, if it's a female product, which I've sold in the past, then it would be perhaps a good idea to either get some friend or maybe a partner to try it or maybe send it to someone who can actually give you some feedback on it. Maybe some kind of focus group participant. Maybe you run some kind of little experiment or test for a little bit of market research, or you find an influencer that the product is suitable for and send them a free sample to in turn provide you with some kind of feedback, right? That's some ideas for market research, which you can choose to do. The next one is actually not researching the supplier that you're going to use. Okay. Now this one is very important and it's an issue which you don't really tend to run into so often if you're using the big names and the apps out there. But if you're going for an individual supplier or a new company on the market, this can be a little bit of a risk, okay? So before choosing the supplier which you're going to be wanting to use or the app which is serving as a supplier for your product line, you want to make sure you do some adequate research into who they are and their past track record. You need to vet them and do research before you even consider doing any business with them. So this means that you need to check reviews and ratings based on their own services. Make sure they're trustworthy and reliable. And this also goes the same for sourcing agents, right? Especially sourcing agents who may be individuals or part of small groups that you're not actually sure about. It's all about social proof in that circumstance. Of course, there's some great Discord groups and dropshipping groups out there who have already vouched for some of these people, which is a good choice to actually choose those rather than finding them yourself if they don't really have any kind of reviews. And you need to make sure that these people or the service can keep up with your own demand based on your business and its output. Next is not optimizing your website. I don't know why not everybody is choosing to do this. I see so many YouTube tutorials in the dropshipping in space talking about saying the design of the website really doesn't matter because we've got ads and they're going to make some sales. And whilst that is true in terms of the fact that people are mostly impulse buying from your ads and they're probably not going to click on other areas of your website, if you're going for the more organic traffic or if you're leveraging things like social media to get people on your website, then you need to have a good website, okay? You might be able to output some good sales using ads, but if you're choosing to get customers elsewhere or if you just want to rank well in the search engine and then get some organic traffic, optimizing your website's everything. And there's also some other things to this, okay? So first of all, your website's your face of your business. So you should have some pride, of course, in how you bring your brand across to its audience. You need to make sure that it's first of all user-friendly, that it has good SEO if you want to optimize it for search engine ranking, and make sure it meshes with your brand identity and its audience, and it has a color scheme to your whole brand identity and image. Make sure that it's friendly and welcoming for newcomers who visit it, and make sure it's attractive and aesthetic enough for them to stay on it. And probably the biggest one, which I see not everyone's talking about, is the fact that it needs to be mobile friendly. Now, Shopify's theme customizer actually has an option where you can choose desktop view and also mobile view. So you can see how it's designed on a mobile. Now, for most dropshippers, especially if you're using TikTok ads, I'd recommend just design it for a mobile because everyone going on your ads, all those conversions are for a mobile device, right? But if you're trying to get organic traffic and also appeal to people using desktop, which is a lot of people who buy on Amazon, for an example, and a lot of people in the e-commerce space, Space as customers, then I recommend also trying to make your website look attractive for the desktop version too. Don't overlook that. Then we have overpricing or underpricing your products. So finding the right price can of course be tricky. I'm sure when you're testing out tons of products, people may be testing 20, 30, 40 products over their lifetime before they find a good winner. But while you're trying to test these products, it can be quite confusing to figure out how do I actually price this? And it can take some trial and error, right? You must do research on this, but but research isn't really going to familiarize yourself with exactly how to price it. All you need to know is, first of all, we need at least a three to five times markup on a product to actually make it profitable or in some cases even break even. So you need to make sure the margins are there and you need to make sure that the product is cheap to buy. It's lightweight to ship and it obviously ticks the other boxes. But you need to find that reasonable price where customers who are seeking your product see it as good value and will incentivize them enough and be low enough or valuable enough that they'll actually buy it, 
market, right? While still generating profit for yourself. So this definitely takes trial and error, but you really need to think about this because if you're underpricing it, you're not going to make any money. And if you're overpricing it, you're not going to make any money either. But it could still be a winning product if you tune it and mess around with the pricing. So don't just drop a product quickly. It may be a pricing, okay? And don't sell products which you think are really good when you're just losing money with them. Then another one that's more lesser known, especially for beginners, is not having a backup plan. So what am I talking about this? Well, this is kind of like a backup plan or a so-called contingency plan for when you have those unexpected issues and things go wrong. So this means things like shipping and supply chain issues, which is going to be a thing, such as especially during Chinese Golden Week and Chinese New Year and all those Chinese holidays, because if you're shipping from a Chinese fulfillment center or if you're using something like AliExpress, you're going to have big delays for a few weeks on all of your items and your customers are obviously going to get distressed with that. Things like pandemics and global events around the world, stock shortages and changes in your customer's demand from an influx of orders and popularity with your store. So there's so many things you have to think about and you need to kind of consider them before you get to that point so you know what you're going to do because otherwise it's just going to be a shock and you might get a backlog of orders, you might start getting loads of returns, you might lose profit and you might have to go back to square one and back to the drawing board which you don't want to do. The next one is ignoring your customers. Like I said before we have ads and we've kind of got to the point where if your product's good you're probably going to have some guaranteed orders each day but it's very easy to then think oh I'm getting a certain number of orders so let's just ignore the real customer okay. Ignoring customer feedback is a poor mistake. Listening to customer feedback and altering based on it is a big point for success okay. You need to make sure that you listen to your customer feedback. Of course this is through things like organic reviews which they're going to leave on your products after they receive them based on if they're happy or not happy with it and also things like customer support emails the problems that they're having you need to read them and actually think about that okay because if there's some issues there you need to think about how you can solve them and then improve the customer experience then you want to go ahead and make those necessary adjustments to make sure it doesn't happen again or it's improved in some way and you come up with a solution to each problem and make changes based on customer feedback to appeal to future customers and improve their experience and then you'll create what's called brand integrity and those customers that had issues will most likely come back because they have more faith in your business and the last one is of course failing to have superior customer service we're in the drop shipping game we're using drop shipping as the e-commerce servicing model but we don't want to just be one of these drop shipping stores where we crop up on a trend and then shut down a few weeks later and make a decent amount of profit we still want to have happy customers we still want to then prevent returns and losing money in turn okay so we want to make sure we have a good business so this is crucial having good customer service for one to build customer trust like we mentioned a few moments ago and loyalty and how we do this is we're extremely responsive to any requests that they make and we're helpful in those requests to meet their needs and solve their issues now the best way to consider this is let's put ourselves in the consumer's shoes okay let's put ourselves in the body of the customers imagine that you are them and imagine the distress and your own frustration that you'd have when you have a problem with your order if you have a problem with something you buy off amazon or ebay you probably get a bit annoyed right well that's how they're feeling if they run into any issues with your business it's no different just because you're the owner of the business and you're servicing in a little bit of an easier fashion through dropshipping, you still need to solve customers' problems, okay? You need to provide some kind of option for them contacting you. So this is obviously through like customer support emails, which is the most popular one. Live chat, if you can be on the website regularly enough to reply to them, or you can have like a live chat bot that issues auto responses, and then you can manually email them later during your service hours. You can have an FAQ section, which is really good. That also prevents people contacting you because if there's very common questions and answers to them, then there's less customer service requests you're actually going to get. So it's a lot easier to manage those and you might not then have to hire someone to do that. So having an FAQ, which is frequently asked question section is also really useful too. So make sure you have those, make sure you have some kind of like insurance policies for your customers. So this is like returns and refunds. You could give them like a, a 30 day returns and refunds window so they can actually get the money back if they have a real problem. Okay. So offer all these insurance policies to your customers. You'll lose money in the short term, but in the long term, your business will obviously do better and you'll make more profit and you'll thank yourself for doing so. So that's the seven biggest dropshipping mistakes, some of which are more lesser known and that I see covered on less videos. I try to make some of these more unique because I'm seeing the same mistakes in videos. So hope these were useful. If you have any questions below, let me know in the comments. Make sure to like the video and subscribe and I'll see you real soon.